Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday night. End of the weekend is upon us. I can say that now. It's not Sunday morning. Sunday evening out here. 9.02 p.m. California time, October 27, 2024 is the date. Latest activity shows some movement there into Southern California with a 3.3 earthquake coming in. Also being picked up there on the uh, Parkfield, California seismograph station. So let's go ahead and check out uh, California, see what's going on just offshore here. Off to the northwest of Santa Barbara. Just the latest quake out here to uh, strike the Southern California area. Looks like this is uh, very close to the Lompoc area. Being felt by a few folks out here, it looks like. Let me check out the uh, origins here real quick. See what we got for magnitudes. This has not been reviewed yet by a seismologist. So let's see here. 24 stations reporting quite a few uh, threes there. Yeah, it's probably going to register around a 3.3 or so. 3.33. There you go. Interesting. Uh, so a little bit of shaking going on out here across the uh, Southern California area. Not a highly populated region there, but it is along the coastline. And let's see which fault system that is off of. Maybe the uh, this area right here. Doesn't look like it's on it, though. It's to the south, so it could be a couple different faults within this mountain range area. California Spaceport. Interesting, just outside of that area. Let's see what we got here. A little ways outside of town, but uh, yeah, a few folks reporting... Fill in that three-pointer. Just uh, one of the latest quakes here in California. Uh, earlier this morning, we had a 2.1 off the coast here. A little bit further up north. Got to watch these areas that really haven't seen any seismic activity here recently. They're starting to fill in. One little earthquake here in the uh, orange area of California, 1.3. Got a little clustering going on here around the Borrego Springs area there on the San In or the uh, San Jacinto Fault Zone. The San Andreas Fault right now remains quiet, uh, but uh, who knows for how much longer. Still seeing some activity up here across the Death Valley area and north of Ridgecrest. Uh, and a couple smaller quakes there on the San Andreas Fault here. The creeping segment and also down here, you know, not necessarily on the Parkfield segment. It's on the creeping section up there, it looks like. Um, 2.5 and above. 2.7 down here in that low clustering area. Also 2.6 further up north around the uh, Ridgecrest area, north of Ridgecrest. So this actually makes it the third three or uh, second three-pointer here today. The Olancha area seen a 3.3 earlier this morning. That's the region north of Ridgecrest. Yeah, still underneath automatic status. It's Sunday night. Geologists, seismologists got to get up in the morning for work. So uh, I don't know how long it's going to take them to uh, report back on this earthquake, but we'll come back and see what the magnitude uh, is adjusted to. How much you want to bet they wanted, they're wanted? they going to downgrade it a little bit. A little bit of movement off the coast here into the Northeast Pacific Basin. When was the last time you've seen an earthquake way out there, folks? Let me tell you, that's, a, that's an odd one. And with all the earthquake activity out here recently, it's something to watch. Um, we've seen a swarm of activity there in the Northern California. Uh, a lot of trimmer out here at the Southern end. A lot of shallow quakes here. Uh, crestal quakes here across Northern California. And um, that's a little odd one way out there. A little 2.4. Let's see if that has been reviewed yet or not. Still oh, <laughs> underneath automatic status. And this was put out... Uh, did this one get put out here let's see that was earlier this afternoon so they haven't even got to that earthquake out there yet so who knows even if it's a legit earthquake but uh, it's definitely an odd one to say the least let's check out trimmer map here tonight see what we have for cascadia trimmer by the way feeling a little bit better out here my voice still a little bit uh not quite as normal as it should be but uh getting better appreciate all the, the uh, positive vibes out there Nothing coming in for trimmer activity there across the Cascadia for now. 
Uh, the rest of the country, as you can see, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there through the states. Movement today, let's see where it's mostly confined at. Looks like around the uh, Middle America Trench southward. You can follow that line of seismic activity all the way down the Perugia Trench. Quite the uptick going on there. Nothing big. Just a bunch of threes and fours out there stirring up in this area uh, in the last 24 hours. We do have a swarm going on here across the Puerto Rico Trench. Let's go ahead and zoom into this area. Uh, really close up here to the Puerto Rico Trench area. In, in fact, one right smack dab on this trench zone. And uh, this clustering is going on here. Southwestern edge of Puerto Rico and some specifically up here across the Puerto Rico Trench region. North of the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands region with a bunch of threes coming in here. And of course, this area capable of producing uh, some mega quake activity. Right now, just, uh, you know, some uptick, that's for uh, certain. It's been a little while since we've seen any swarming going on there, but uh, today, filling in that uh, little seismic gap. Japan area, fairly quiet. Taiwan region, seen some older uh, 5.0 earthquake activity earlier today. Uh, a lot of older quakes here through the Philippines. Newer movement across the Java Trench here in the white colored rings. One of the latest quakes, though, super deep earthquake there into the area. Let's go ahead and see what we got across the Java Trench here. Going to be this 4.8 earlier this evening. Underneath the Banda Sea, 294 miles underneath this area. So things are starting to get wound up here. A lot of deeper activity in the region recently, waiting for some further larger scale adjustment across here. Just a matter of time. A return of deeper activity here across the Tonga Trench and the Fiji area. Look at that 5.3 coming in there, pretty deep earthquake into the region. It's going to be right here in the uh, well northern edge here of the Kermadec Trench, it looks like. 310 miles there for that pretty deep earthquake. Uh, New Zealand, 3.7 coming in right around the South Island area. Nothing else major going on there uh, for now. The Atlantic Ocean, there's that five-pointer stirring up. But this kind of makes sense there to see elevated seismic activity across this area uh, following any divergent boundary out here, oceanic uh, divergent zone. Separation here of the seafloor slowly, obviously, over time. Uh, that will add further strain out here across the North American region, South America area, but also can't forget the Caribbean plate here. It's a very small microplate. Uh, I, I don't even know if I consider it a microplate, but it's a smaller plate compared to the rest of the area. Uh, and what takes place here across the Atlantic puts a strain out here on the Puerto Rico Trench and the uh, subduction zone here uh, to the east around the Dominica area. <coughs> Excuse me. Told you, I'm not quite there yet. Not quite 100% uh, normal. 3.3 still. Uh, underneath automatic status review. So I'm not for sure when they're going to get to it. But uh, I can only assume that uh, it may be a little while before a geologist or a seismologist jumps on that, um, that magnitude for a correct reading. Because right now it's underneath the uh, preliminary data. Um, Australia, or Australia, <laughs> Alaska here, up north, a couple twos and even a three-pointer earlier today, or that was actually late last night, so things relatively quiet there through Alaska, aside from some microquake activity. All right, we're waiting on the arrival here, might be a late arrival, or any time now, uh, for a G2 class storm, now that is expected here tonight. Time frame between 03 and 06. Uh, it could be anywhere from that time to up to uh, 0900. Right now, current UTC time, 04. So we're already into the 03 to 06 time period and nothing coming in yet in terms of elevated aurora activity. But uh, we could see things ramp up here this evening to a G2 class storm. Pending that uh, CME didn't miss us. I don't know how it would miss us because it was technically a full halo CME. So something should show up here in terms of elevated uh, space weather activity here for the auroras. But we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Uh, amplified proton events continuing there over the last couple days from all the flaring going on. 
That's some charged protons, elevated charged protons there affecting uh, the um, ionosphere. No major flares recently. Uh, looks like we're seeing a little M flare right now. Had a two point, uh, what was this one? M2.59 it looks like earlier today. There's our last X flare that produced a significant CME out here, somewhat earth directed, so we should see it anytime tonight. Uh, let's see here, our flare threat remains elevated here, folks. 30% chance for X flare. Uh, M flare at 75, C flare around 99% chance. Now these last couple M flares have been popping up here around the newer active region on the northeastern limb northeastern limb of the sun there and that's from 3878 a more dynamic look at it here shows uh some intermingling of the magnetic cores there or magnetic um polarities so that's uh, obviously an area of watch here with a couple different m flares recently today uh, this region down here still got some growth here within this area that's produced that x um flare here recently the the one that we're waiting on in terms of the cme from that x flare uh, that produced that x flare a couple days back uh this other area back here it's starting to look a little disorganized not really expecting too much from this area more so from this region potentially this area uh, and of course this newer area up on the northeastern limb has a uh, potential uh, let's see what we got here for the numerical models watching california here getting hit with some uh cooler weather i noticed the models are not all the way out in terms of loaded uh being you know fully computed here but we'll go ahead and check and see what we have storm system man that's a huge storm system coming in right around halloween on the day and evening as well for halloween uh, so it's going to be a wet one. Maybe even down here in Northern California, it's starting to a little bit, look a little bit wetter down here uh, in my neck of the woods. But for certain Oregon, yeah, it's going to be one of those trick-or-treat evenings where the uh, parents are driving the kids around in the car and stopping at uh, you know each individual house and letting them out. Unless you go out with an umbrella. I used to do that when I was a kid, walk around in the rain with the umbrella and uh, go trick-or-treating. A little bit of rain didn't stop me. Uh, severe weather potential here as we head into the middle of, of this coming week as well. A fairly wide swath of severe weather expected across uh, the portions there. Uh, day four is going to be at the Storm Prediction Center here. Already has a 15% chance here of some severe weather on day four. Now that is going to be on Wednesday and the Thursday of this coming week. So that's when things could really pop up in terms of tornado potential out there so we'll cover that as we get a little bit uh, closer to this time period all right still holding at a 3.3 has not been reviewed yet but obviously it's been it, it was an earthquake people are feeling it also it showed up there on the park field section of the san andreas fault there looks like there was a couple of earthquakes prior to that as well i don't know uh, maybe intermittent data loss there on that station for some reason. Uh, anyway, that's it, folks. Um, hope you had had a good weekend. We'll catch you guys back out here for the uh, the Monday update. Hopefully by tomorrow I'll be back to normal. Just been keeping up on all the uh, antibiotics and all the other home remedies out here in terms of you know boosting my immune system and uh, trying to kick this whatever it is it's either bronchitis or pneumonia maybe not pneumonia it's just i think it's more of a bronchitis it's a really weird feeling uh, around my throat area not tonsillitis is not anything like that um don't have a fever just really weird not covid i tested for that it's negative so uh yeah either way i'm getting better i'm on the road to recovery and again i appreciate all the positive thoughts and comments out there from everyone uh, i definitely appreciate every single one of you guys out there all right have a good day or good night and we'll catch you guys out here tomorrow morning sometime stay safe out there folks be prepared